Alrighty folks, we are back and uh, we are playing a little bit of Echo because I have to wait a couple hours to my shopping to turn up before I can have a nap before the Halloween thing tonight so I thought we'd just Echo and joining me of course is the wonderful Rowan. Hello. So yes, what is Echo Rowan? Echo is, and here's the collection of hashtags that will immediately awaken Satan, a furry <laughs> gay visual novel dating simulator that is actually a psychological horror. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not like Doki Doki Literature Club. I will fight you on this. If you don't believe me, sit around, watch, let's find out. Um, there is no meta-narrative breaking. There is no fucking around with the code. It's just straight up fucking psychological horror tearing apart your need for a relationship. Um, <laughs> Basically, yeah. It's brutal. It's fucking brutal in places sometimes it's it's very cute and funny and sometimes you'll be fucking sobbing as your legs have been torn off um quite literally yeah literally literally that fucking otter and his legs <laughs> um <laughs> my god the story um baseline story is that you play as chase an otter coming back to his hometown to do his school project he's kind of spun this into an excuse to meet up with his old friend group some of which have left some of which are still in echo that's the name of the town it's called echo it's in the middle of bumfuck middle of nowhere everything is miserable and there's something wrong with it in a deep fundamental kind of way um in that, in that same sense that you tend to get with a lot of bumfuck middle of nowhere towns where like everything kind of sucks and is dilapidating slowly and people really shouldn't be living there just spiritually speaking everyone's a fucking meth head or something um escaping is the best way around dealing with echo the town um, it has a history of mass hysteria, it has a history of really bad colonial violence, got a really bad history of oh, fucking everything, to be honest. Mm. Um, I don't think anything has ever gone right in the town of Echo, quite frankly. Um, and this town needs its secrets, so I can't say much more. Trigger warnings for fucking everything, but specifically in this route, which is Jenna's, abuse. Uh, familial abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, the works just abuse triggers all around with jenna that's that's what i know about her route really mm. um but i think that kind of stands for like every route <laughs> in some way or another mm -hmm. so um in this version yeah. of the route we have um chosen to go with jenna uh we kind of we went on a hike with tj Mm -hmm. And we have just... They played a prank on us by getting a fake spider out because Chase is scared of spiders. Yep. Yeah, I dropped my vape. And then um, we went to find Carl when Carl was yet again not here. Yeah, every single time they try and throw his early birthday party, something fucking goes wrong. <laughs> it's... It's tragic. Mm. In the quite a traditional sense of the word like you see these characters bouncing off of each other going oh fuck none of them should be around each other um but it's like that a lot with childhood friends in small towns i think so, you know like there's no one else really around so you just hang out by default yeah you don't really get on so we've, yeah. been, we've been looking for carl we've apparently just phoned his parents to ask where he is and they've been like mm -hmm. well we don't know either Yep, so. and they're probably pretty angry. Um, Jenna is taking kind of charge of the situation. Uh, Flynn has got a bit of a, a redemption arc going on where he's actually helping out a bunch. Leo is getting increasingly monstrous. He has the day before sexually assaulted the protagonist in Freddy Fazbear's. <laughs> over, a cr <laughs> over a crane machine. Over a crane machine while you were trying to get Carl a fucking birthday present, like... Yeah... God damn it, Leo, you are a piece of shit! So, yes, we continue from there. As I said, this stream will probably only be going, like, maybe about two hours? We'll wait and see. If we get into something good, maybe we'll keep going a little bit longer, but we'll wait and see. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I enter the kitchen and approach him. Oh, and um, Jenna told us about the monster in her closet that she saw as a little kid. That's very true, yes, because Chase also said yeah. he saw things. Yes, he saw the hanging man. She saw a, a monster in her closet. Specifically monstrous because it didn't have a muzzle. 
like no no long bit of the face weren't mm. there Ooh. we know who it is anyway but we're yeah uh, if you don't want to watch any other routes, they're all on our YouTube now. Um, I think as of this recording, I think all except the last video we've did, so the start of Jenna's route, is all on our YouTube. So And that one probably be out this week or very week worse the next week. So, yes. Anyway, yeah. let's carry on. Let's get on to Leo and his inexplicable West Country Mexican accent. <laughs> Hello there. Hey. Yo. A silence lingers between us. So... Carl, I, uh, you know where he might be? I, of course, I'm just not telling anyone in case that I, uh, not telling anybody because I like all this quality time we're having, eh? Leo, this is serious. Jenna's about to call the sheriff. I, good, good. Two birds with one stone. He holds up his phone notification on the screen I can't quite read. Got a call from Mariana back at my parents' house. Mm. The police were checking to see if I was there. What? What? My brow raises as I try to study Leo's expression, but he's stony as hell right now, his jaw set in near constant grit. Family Plex got my plates from the security camera thing in the parking lot, I'm guessing. I sigh, rubbing my forehead. Oh yeah, he punched a pinball machine. Yeah, he fucking broke something after being told off as sexually assaulting a person. Leo, you're a piece of shit! I'm about to open my mouth and say something, though I catch a glimpse of something of a strange, <laughs> empty look in Leo's eyes that brings me to a pause. I decide against my scolding and instead move beside him, taking one of Carl's mugs and pouring myself a cup of coffee from the coffee maker. It's one of those fancy ones that has an espresso maker built in and a basket next to the machine with at least 30 different flavoured cups. The flavours are mostly dessert based, like with labels like salted caramel, frosted oatmeal cookie, cinnamon, churro, and truffle sundae. Why would you have coffee that sweet? I, I don't know. That's someone who doesn't drink hot coffee, I don't know. Like, um, I like a, a coffee with a bit of sugar and it just take the bitterness off, but like, Jesus. I just, I just it like, is America, I, I guess. I just like plain iced coffee. Mm. Then again, I'm, I like I'm, a hot coffee. But then again, I am an addict to caffeine, so... Mm. Caffeine makes me sleepy, so I tend not to, not to drink coffee. <laughs> that, that sounds like an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. That sounds like it'd be like some really badly translated idiom or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, they sound pretty delicious. As far as I know, Carl only drinks energy drinks in usually obscene quantities of them. After taking a sip, the bitter skull hits my tongue and I find myself rela re reflexively reeling before getting a chance to swallow. Despite having all these choices available, it looks like Leo went for straight black. Leo's gaze shifts back to me and I see him perk a white brow. Damn fine cup of coffee, eh, Chola? I managed to swallow without spluttering too much, putting a slight artsy flair on my tone. Black is the moonless eve at midnight, just how I like it. He smiles, <laughs> the visibly pained expression which he obscures behind his own cup as he drinks. I bet at university all you drink are those rainbow frappuccinos. I saw them them do's. <laughs> I remember when them came out. My dorm was by the library and the coffee shop was there selling them. The line was insane and they sold out super quick. My friend Vincent, he's a barista there. He tells me it's like mango juice, sprinkles, whipped cream, frappa syrup and food colouring. Oh, is that the same Vincent from all them photos you've been uploading recently, yeah? The other wolf guy? I am not jealous at all. No jealousy here at all. <laughs> I can see where this is going from a mile away. I take another drink of my coffee despite the bitterness. That's what coffee is meant to taste like, Chase. Oh my God, Americans. Uh, I mean the pic. I mean the pictures. They they just pop up on my timeline. Yeah, I, I just see them pop up. Yeah, he's fucking stalking you, Chase. Yeah, same guy. Ah, uh, I hear you. There's a pause and I change the topic. Are you going to turn yourself into the sheriff? Not yet. He responds quickly. Got a fine curler and I think I think a wolf who's who's known the horned fucker his whole life can snip him out better than an overpaid mall cop, eh? Sorry, the cat's decided to do his own thing today. Aww. Um... I don't know where my, my soft one went. The big one is cuddled up in the corner. Yeah. Will be more trouble for you if Sheriff Ma 
Molko? Molko. Molko. Assuming that's who's still in charge. Finds you first. Leo sighs with a frustrated gravelly rasp, his gaze flicking down onto the kitchen floor. You sound like Jenna. It's probably because what I'm saying makes sense. The wolf looks up, his bug-eyed uh, bug gaze focused on me as if searching for something. These stem get-together has gone more badly than I could have ever predicted, you know? I nod, not disagreeing with that sentiment in the slightest. First Flynn at the river, now that shit of the family plex, now Carl's nowhere to be found. This may all be the say, worst the shit ever. I will say, the only thing about, about the um, designs that actually kind of bothers me, like, I'm used to fairy designs, I'm used to most of what I'm looking at screen. Mm. What I'm not used to is them having human eyes. Hmm. That's not a normal thing for furries. They normally go with the more animalistic look, like full coloured. Sorry, it's just something I oh, noticed out of the blue there. It's something I wouldn't have noticed, so that's interesting. Yeah, I get yeah, no, wolves do not have the white of the eyes, obviously. Mm. Well, they mm. do, but it's usually only when they kind of really open their eyes wide that you can see it. It's when you get that whale eye kind of look when yeah. they're nervous. Yeah. Um, and most furry art, from what I've seen anyway, does go for the more animalistic look with just the colour and the people. Mm, mm. At least the fairy art I've seen recently. Either way, sorry. No, no, I interrupted it's a very you. interesting tangent. Uh, sorry. That's all right. Uh, My favorite thing about it is when you get things like goats. They do the fucking like horizontal pupils. Ah, uh, yes. And it can be very cool, <laughs> very funny. Spooky this, goat. This this may be the worst shit. Wor this may this may all be the worst shit. Yeah. But I wouldn't ever be able to forgive myself if I gave up the last chance to ever spend time with you guys again. He says his coffee down, paws gripping the back of the countertop. Leo, come on, we'll see each other again. Hopefully you don't not. know that. Jenna's moving all the way to the East Coast. TJ's out the country probably in you. After what happened at the Family Plex, you probably don't want to see me ever again either. Hey. There's a serious intensity in the cadence of his voice, as if something is practically choking him as he speaks those last few words. The air even feels weird. I think for a moment about what to say, still processing Leo's response. Looking around, I spot an old black beanie hanging in the coat rack by the door, and I remember something. Carl once told me something back when I said you were becoming too cool for us in high school, with football and stuff. You know, back when you stopped riding the bus and spent all your time at school, uh, after school practicing with the jock kids? He said that after all that shit we've been through, none of the present petty drama stuff matters, yeah? I mean, sure, it kind of... I'm kind of skeeved, but it doesn't mean I hate you forever. Just hate me temporarily, then. I sigh. You still you did sexually assault him, Leah. <laughs> you still haven't even said sorry or anything, man. Why would I say sorry when it's fucking Jenna who showed up and ruined everything? Are you serious? I told you to fuck off, too. Why? Why? Jesus Christ, man, you were grinding on me 15 feet away from the fucking kitty corner. You you used to do that sort of horny stuff to me all the time. Now you're you're different. He it's been like three years, Leo. <laughs> he gesticulates with a, a swirling motion towards me using both of his paws. Well, I guess I am. That's sort of a point about why it's fucked up. Leo blinks, his shoulders raised high, he begins to speak faster and with more of his old accent seeping through. You didn't even tell me you were uncomfy or nothing. You just told me straight to fuck off. Yeah, it felt appropriate at the time, man. This is why I didn't want you to leave Echo Water. They've changed you. <laughs> You've become woke. You won't allow me to sexually <laughs> assault you quietly. <laughs> I fucking hate Leo, man. Uh, it isn't like things were great between you and I before I left, either. Because Jenna got you. What are you talking about? We had it all planned out. A house, a car, a job waiting for you at me dad's shop. The life we talked about since we were little. Then Jenna started talking to you about Pueblo and how you should go. To hell with all of his hick trash, you're better than them, yeah? Leo. He's better than you, and he fucking murdered a man. And then she came up with that fucking prank. I see his fist shake instantly, knowing what he's talking about. 
You broke my phone. You broke my heart, Poochie. For, for fuck's sake, shut up. When, when oh, in the fuck. Kitchen. See, he doesn't have the icing. Yeah. His eyes are different. That's normal, sir. Yeah. You see the difference, right? Mm, yeah. Mm. When I into the kitchen, I realise I can still hear the faint sound of Jenna on the phone to Mr. Hendricks in the other room. While you two fuckers are having a domestic, Carl's getting roomed by the Mothman. Or whatever the fuck that red-eyed shit is in his phone. Leo steps forward as Joe's curled back into a snarl. Get out of here, Flynn. Surprisingly, Flynn holds his ground. The lizard squeezes his fists again, uh, squeezes against his chest and stomach as Leo approaches, reflexively defending himself in case, in case swung upon. We don't have time for this shit. Leo stares hard at his shoulders raised and fur bristling. Flynn flinches some. It reminds me of how Leo acted towards him at the river and is starting to wonder if this is how Leo treats Flynn when we're not here. Leo, what the hell are you doing? Calm down, alright? I'm still fuming about what Leo said, but even uh, even I know that this bickering and petty contrast is the problem at hand. I saw a ten seconds of silence pass, neither of the two tall figures budging an inch. Finally, Leo steps forward, shoulder checking Flynn hard enough as he stumbles back against the wall. Gotta find Carl myself! Flynn splutters angrily, Leo muttering some string of swears as he heads towards the door. At least tell me where the fuck you're going to look so we know where not to go. Leo pauses his hand on the door handle. Danica Street to Elizabeth Road, south to north. Great, good luck. The door slams behind me. Behind me? Okay. The door slams behind me and heavy stumps of his feet on the gravel outside. He's gone. I look down and realise I'm shaking. Even if it had been years, an argument like that with someone who basically defined my child and teenage years as a way of hurting deep. That stupid fucking prank. I try to refocus, making my way uh, over towards the knocked over Flynn and offering my paw. You okay, man? He glares off me for a second, then takes my grasp and pulls himself up. The lizard weighs a ton, though, nearly pulling me down with him. Ah, uh, just go help TJ already. I'm gonna check the basement again. He dusts off the front and begins fiddling with his shirt collar, walking off back towards the stairwell before I can respond. Through the window I can see Leo outside. He's down the road away, he's past his van, he's talking to someone. I can see the figure he's talking to point towards the house we're in and Leo crosses his arms. It can't be the sheriff already, can it? Moving to the window to get a closer look I can see the figure is a weasel. Duke. Jesus, I haven't seen him in years. I used to see him on his porch a lot back when I visited Leo's place near Daly. As far as I remember, he was a loner type, occasionally getting involved with civic stuff and the mayor. I have a vague memory of him being married to a younger lady when I was a kid, but I don't remember seeing her after first grade. His interactions with me are always pretty brief, oh. not, to, not much to judge a personality by. Now though he's pointing at, m at the house, speaking loudly, uh, though I can't discern what he's saying, Leo just looks angry or his tail stiff. Despite the range, I can practically feel the old fellow's gaze shifting, meeting mine through the window. His pointing hand shifts, now aimed directly at me. I receptively blink, stepping back when my eyes refocus as a plume of dust in the air. Duke is on his back in the middle of the dirt road and Leo is quickly marching back towards his van. What the hell? Duke is already back up on his feet, sprinting now away from Carl's house, his mouth still moving. He's saying something. Leo's van peels out the driveway, gravel kicking up in his wake. Within a few seconds, he's out of sight as well. Jesus. I walk over to the door. Locking it once again just to be safe. Left alone, I head out of the kitchen. As I walk past the living room, I overhear a, slow, a low rasp of Flint's voice, his tone serious. And the fucker shoved me. You said he was pulling that shit at the mall too? Mm hmm. I talked to Chase if you wanted more details. To think he just had to pick this day of all days to fucking snap. Flint rubs the tip of his snout, his slitted eyes narrowed until they spot me. He just looks back at Jenna. Let's go, Malco, now. Right. Flynn begins to die off the sheriff. Jenna looks towards the door, then to me. We'll talk later, Chase, okay? If you want, of course. I pause, having been about to head upstairs. Oh, uh, yeah, sure thing. She smiles at me despite everything. Oh, hey. TJ rises up from Carl's computer chair, clearly forcing a smile as he sees me. He's clutching his cell phone to his chest. TJ? Yeah? Are you okay? 
No. Gigi sinks back down in the chair. Perking and Brower move to one of Carl's console gaming chairs over towards the computer area. Gigi has laid his cell phone back into his pocket. I'm worried about Carl. We all are. We're calling the police and hopefully they can help us, yeah? I know, it's just that image on his phone. You know, the picture Carl took? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> spooky. Spooky doesn't even begin to describe my initial thoughts regarding it, but this is TJ I'm speaking to, so gentle words and all. Yeah. One of his canines sinks into his lower lip, the lynx chewing on it nervously. Uh, Maybe it's a screenshot of something he had in his monitor. You could check his history and recent documents to make sure. Have you already checked all that? His face flashes with a guilty expression. No, there's a password required to log in. Oh yeah, the new version of these operating systems makes you log in with your email account. It's dumb. I pause, thinking for a moment, then scoot a little closer to the keyboard. May I? TJ blinks, taking him a second to understand. Oh, yeah, sure. He rolls onto the side and I pull my keyboard closer to me. Clicking on the mouse begins it brings up a generic login screen with the username Blazels is visible. Uh, when we were younger, Carl and I used to play a lot of free-to-play MMO type games. I convinced him to give me his password once, saying that I'd grind XP for him while on a vacation with his parents. In reality, asshole sent him me his rare party hat item to. In reality, asshole sent uh, asshole me sent his rare party hat item to my character. I tried to tell him that the game devs deleted the item from the game, but I don't think he believed me. God, I was a shitty ten-year-old. Oh, hey, that worked. Yep, kind of surprised he's still using the same old password, but kind of not at the same time. Carl's a one for much to uh, isn't one much for change, is he? Anyway, we should look through. For what should we look through first? He just scoots closer, his chin practically on my shoulder. I have to shift my head some so that his whiskers don't brush my cheek. His messenger, I guess. Huh. Oh. Huh, I don't recognise most of these names. I see you and me on here. Most of the others outside of Gripper is online friends. That's good to know he's still being social and meeting people after we left. Well, besides the name of the people in our group, these look to be all online people. I played Vox Desperous multiplayer with Carl and that Lucha Lucha guy before. He lives on the other side of the planet, practically. I wonder if he still talks to Heather. I hope not. There's a brief silence. Flynn messaged him earlier, though. I see a one next to his name. But I don't think he wants us reading that. He didn't want anyone, anyone looking through Carl's phone after he and Jenna were looking at it. I think Flynn might have been venting to Carl about what happened at the river pretty hard, like. TJ's face briefly scrunches as flinching in response to that information. I move to click on Flynn's name, but TJ stops me. No! Blinking, I look over toward a wide-eyed TJ, who now seems to be recall, uh, recoiling in his own abrupt interruption. What? Uh, sorry. I just think we shouldn't pry into that. If he didn't want us to see it? To be honest, Flynn being so cagey about his contact with Carl makes me more curious. However, if, it, if what little stuff Flynn says to TJ to his face was enough to keep leaving him shaking and distraught, I can't imagine what saying the stuff he didn't say would do. Alright. I scoot back to the side a little bit and TJ take the mouse. He still looks pretty guilty for snapping at me. Let's check his browser history. Okay. TJ moves the cursor down to the star-like symbol in the taskbar. Huh, okay. Weed, hauntings, porn, video games, movie reviews, job search stuff, and let's plays. I guess pretty par for the course with, regard that with regards to Carl. Nothing too unusual, but TJ moves the cursor to the future factory link. I gently yeah. assertively place my paw in TJ's own and move the cursor down elsewhere. I was waiting in case you were saying something. No, I coughed. Ah, oh, right, okay. Sorry. Um, it's a store for special couches. Isn't that called a futon? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, TJ, you sweet summer child. Look, the browsing history stops right before midnight. 
And the picture on Carl's phone was taken around that time, right? Yeah. That's really weird. It is. Let's keep looking. Try recent files. Maybe not. Close the browser, hesitating for a moment for clicking the most recent file titled Carl.doc. A resume? I'll talk to you. A, re a resume? Looks like it. I remember the easy mutt. I'm still a little upset that it shut down. I mean, it's no surprise why, TJ. Yeah, it was just nice to have a local food back that, uh, back when we were kids. The convenience store just isn't the same. The dietary choices available to people here are now really limited, unless they drive all the way to Peyton. A food desert, I think they call it. Food desert, I think it's called. Yes, it was nice to see Carl there working. He seemed to enjoy that place. Mm hmm. Because he got to slack off the whole time, there were barely any customers. I get what you're saying. His anxiety about being around people wasn't nearly as bad back then. TJ nods, smiling sadly. I bet Jenna could help him. You know, she's not actually training to be a psychologist, right? Her studies are more neural med techie. Oh, I know. She's a really good listener, though. I nod. It's her big ears. Chase! I snicker. TJ, uh, turning, straight shaking his head and closing the resume. He moves to open the next document in the list titled FSPace underscore 129768.jpg. Do you mean F space? That's, that's the one. <laughs> what is that meant to be? What the? No. That's my old profile picture I drew for a computer class back in fourth grade. Wow, really? It does look kind of familiar. Yeah, I used it back when we all made social media accounts. My mum made me... My mum made me... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. My mum made me delete mine when I got home. That was probably for the best. There was a lot of drama around how that site made you pick your top eight friends and you ranked them like that. A lot of feelings were hurt and such. It's just my space. Yep. That sounds awful. I think I remember some of it. Sydney didn't ever add me. TJ's gaze shifts for a moment. I wonder why I was always saved and why I was looking at it yesterday. Maybe spending time together again made him sentimental. I still watch some of the funny movies we made but with your camera back then. Your voice used to crack so much. I feel the sting of embarrassment rise from my neck to my cheeks. Oh man, I need to delete those. No, don't. They're really good. As silly as they are, you're really good at making them. I grunt, waving dismissively. Just open the next file, TJ. I really like the one where you use the editing software to make a twin of yourself. I think the plot was one of those twins was a detective and the other was a criminal, both trying to solve their father's murder. And they had superpowers. I was more ambitious than I probably should have been with that project. TJ, just click the next one. Oh, alright. Sorry. TJ clicks the next file, labelled 0922-2008.png. That's from, the trip, no. that's from the trip we took to the reservation. Back in like freshman year of high school. Jeez. Look at you two. You were so little. Carl was just start, starting to get his beard. I think we were both just getting used to high school at that time. That was taken during Thanksgiving. I'm surprised to see Carl smiling in a photo. I'm surprised to see something of Carl other than his butt in a photo. I wish you wouldn't send me those. There's only one item left in the list of file that has been last open. That, is, that was last opened yesterday. It was titled to Carl.png. Wait a second, that sounds familiar. Titi looks at me curiously, then clicks it. Oh wow! I emailed this to Carl months ago. I was just like this, maybe wish I, w I went with you guys to Pueblo. Yeah, I wish you went too, TJ. I was actually trying to convince Carl to come back and try again with a different major. His parents really wants him to stay away from art degrees, which is what he really wants to do. 
Teji looks like he's about to respond, but his left ear perks, the tension shifts towards the doorway. I hear the sound of thuds again uh, against the carpet out in the hall, and I half expect to see Carl around the corner and ask what the hell we're doing. Instead, Jenna steps in, her turquoise eyes are already trained in the computer monitor. She moves closer, leaning over me and squinting at the screen. I remember that. First year at Pre 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 that, that word hurts my mouth. Pueblo. Yep. The parents just dropped you off. I was wondering what the heck you had on your chin that time. Oh yeah, you haven't seen me with facial stuff yet. I know it took you for a soul patch kind of guy, honestly. It's a goatee. It's kind of small for one, don't you think? I frown, reactively reaching up and touching the scruff at the end of my chin. It was kind of weird, but now I'm used to seeing it. I frown deeper. TJ blinks, giving me an apologetic look. I tried to refo refocus the conversation. Carl is missing. <sighs> oh, stop yawning. <laughs> he is. Why are you looking at old pictures? These were the files he was looking at yesterday. And we checked his browser history. His online activity stopped just before midnight and didn't ever resume. Anything unusual there? I think he was looking into buying a fooder. <laughs> Jenna stands there staring at TJ with a deadpan expression. <laughs> After five seconds she looks at me expectantly. He mins a foot on. But you said... No, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, well, we'll be, I'll be sure to let the sheriff know when she gets here. Flynn steps in the room uh, besides Jenna. Usually the gala has a bit of case of resting bitch face, but right now he looks downright sour. Alright, let's figure out who's going to look where. Wolf Boy has made a decision to go check the roads Elizabeth through Danica. Chase, you got Margaret Lane through Tenetus Alley. Also, oh, Tetanus Alley. Jasmine Street, I'm giving you more since you got a car. I'll take Gretchen way through the beginning part of Route 65 in my truck. TJ, you like hiking, eh? we need to check around the hills and the nature trails around here, all the way down to the lake. TJ stiffens, the feeling in the room seems to cool drastically. Only if you're comfortable doing that, okay? We just want to be thorough. I'm fine, I'll be fine. I just want Carl to be okay. Jenna nods, after offering TJ a reassuring smile. Just text me when you're out. I'll most likely be three, uh, free since I'll be keeping watch here at the house. TJ smiles back sheepishly. Okay. Before you all uh, scat off in your respective places, we found some weird shit in the basement. Flynn holds up his fingers, there being some white chalky substance on them. At the entrance to the crawl space, there was a bunch of hoofprints, dents in the wall and plaster everywhere. Like Carl was headbutting the damn thing. There's nothing I can see in there, though. My theory is that Jeremy gave him some bad weed laced with some shit and now Carl's on a real bad trip. Which is why I need you to talk to Jeremy when you get to Jasmine Chase. He looks sidelong towards Jenna. Jasmine Street, I mean. I feel a chill crawls up my spine. Jeremy and especially his friends made my life hell during most of my childhood. Especially after the lake incident. All of them were native inhabitants of Jasmine Street. If it wasn't for Leo stepping in, things would have been worse. You can text me too, Chase. She seems to have read the look on my face and I swallow, trying to look casual. Okay. Flynn rolls his eyes so hard I can't see his pupils for a moment. I think I remember something. I saw Leo get into an argument with Duke outside the house earlier. Duke kept pointing at it and he was saying something to him. Whatever Duke said, it was enough for Leo to push him to the ground and drive off. Knowing Leo's minimum threshold for violent turns, probably hello. Flynn seems to soften a bit at that comment, looking sidelong to hide his smirk before returning to his more hardened expression. Sorry, keep you on I don't know why. But in seriousness, that is concerning. I will also relay that information to the sheriff while I go when she gets here. I'll text Leon trying to figure out what he wanted. Good plan. Flynn immediately heads out without another word. TJ hesitates a little, fidgeting with something on the computer, but he gets up and leaves as well. I'm about to follow suit, but Jenna stops me, her paw on my shoulder. Hey, if 
if Jeremy asks about me, you don't need to lie and say I'm not here or anything, okay? Yeah, yeah, I understand. She lowers her paw, recessing uh, her arms across her chest. Recrossing? Re yeah, it's recrossing. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll talk later, yeah? Mm hmm. I feel like I'm lingering to the point of awkwardness now. Good luck. You too. With a clearing of my throat, I shuffle my way out. I take the bend out of Mary Drive, trying to squint to the dust kicked up from my vehicle past the sagebrush ahead. Carl isn't exactly small or stealthy, so he's, if he's around here, I should be able to see him. The more I drive, the more I start to notice how little maintenance the dirt roads receive out here. My tires kick up topsoil and gravel and divots mar the surface and jolt me in my seat. Unlike Flynn's truck or Leo's van, my little clunker isn't meant for these sort of roads. I can practically feel my maintenance bill growing. As I approach the turn of ja off, Jasmine, uh, off to Jasmine Street, I pull over to the side of the road. I reach back into my shorts and take my wallet, placing it on the glove box and locking it just in case. Slipping out of the vehicle, a cool sweat begins to form along my neck and I have to remind myself that I'm 21. We're all adults. I can drink, I have a car, I live by myself. And Carl is in trouble. As I walk through the clearing of the dry bush, I'm reminded of the last time I was here. I had a fight with my parents. I think it was over my grades or Leo or something. Eventually I had enough of being yelled at and took off a generic teenage angst walk. My MP3 player was with me at the time and I'd put my earbuds in and had the same emo core and had the emo core cracked up. Hours passed and it was like I wasn't even awake, just meandering through the desert, blurry eyed and directionless. I must have ended up on Jasmine because the abandoned school was nearby. I remember stopping to kick a rubber tire or something before I could uh, an arm appeared. It was a furless, sort of pinkish and incredibly long. I just sort of showed up at the corner of my vision, stretching out in front of me, like someone was trying to hug me from behind. The music of my MP3 player had stopped, and there was a complete absence of sound behind the ringing in my ears. For some reason, I still don't understand. I didn't move. Maybe I was too scared. I didn't speak, but all I could say was, hey. And then someone hit me over the back of the head and called me a cocksucker. They tried to take my MP3 player too, but I was clutching it so tightly at that point they couldn't get me to release it. One quick second. Oh. I'm just waiting for the shopping to come to arrive, okay? Um, no matter how many times they hit me in the head. I ended up telling Leo about it later and he basically forbade me from going near Jasmine Street again. He kept asking who did it. I told him I didn't. Oh, that's the thing. Back in a second. Boop, boop. Alrighty, folks, we're back. Apologies for that. I had uh, shopping to take in. So we'll go back one and carry on. I ended up telling Leo about it. About it later. He basically forbade me from ever going near Jasmine Street again. He kept asking who did it. I told him I didn't know, but Leo thought I was just trying to keep it from him. He wanted a big speech about who, about how, where he comes from if somebody did that shit to a mad significant other, they'd be fucking dead. I was too tired and my head hurt, so I asked him how well that philosophy was working out for everyone in his country. That just made him even angrier and he kept going on about how it was supposed to be the protective of us all. Hell, he'd even name drop Sydney to prove his point, someone he almost never brings up because it kills a good mood. I came to a stop at the edge of the cleaning. Cleaning? Clearing. I came to a stop at the edge of the clearing. My street sign uh, on the corner of the base of the hill confirms my location. Jasmine Street. Also known as Tetanus Alley, if you ask Quinn. No wonder Jenna changed, uh, changed her name. I made a point to keep my tail from touching the ground, occasionally checking the path ahead for shattered glass. Looking through the shattered windows of the abandoned manufactured, uh, manufactured homes and littered hilltops, I can't imagine Carl in a place like this. Approaching Jenna's old house, I take stock of how it aged poorly. It's stucco, like, the, like most of the other trailers around. I haven't seen a good coat of paint in at least a decade. The lawn is overgrown with weeds and old convenience store wrappers lay entangled in the grass. Even as little kids, we never played here. Jenna would always insist we go to Leo's or my house. Listening in and peering through the torn screen windows, I can see that no one's home. Moving on around the back, I hear some chatter behind the half-demolished home next door. Some, some familiar voices stand out instantly. I keep out of sight behind the debris. Uh... Who did Heather before, do we remember? Uh, do you want me to do Heather? Sure. 
Cool. Give me 30 seconds to do this thing at the Argent Tournament, because I was doing a quest while you were doing the, the shopping. That's and fine. now I'm stuck doing a, a, a jousting fight. There we go. No, it wasn't like that. <laughs> Hello, sisters, and a babyish whine, practically a coup. That's a, that's a okay. rastor speaking voice that I don't remember her having. Okay, right. Um, do you want me to do Jeremy? Yeah, sure. You lit up with him all day in that shit, and you're gonna. Uh, you're saying you didn't do that? No. He was really, really sweet. I mean, he had an accident and everything. Who's that? <laughs> don't know. The voice we don't know. What kind of an accent? We'll go with that for now. That voice I don't recognise, so gravelly but artificial. Like someone trying to make their voice sound deeper than it is. You know, the Hispanic ones. Is that so, you know, PC to say because my cousin was telling me off face like for something for using that other word? What other word? Why is America weird? Oh that. You call Josh a spick, Heather. But I mean in a good way, you know? Like when I call you a night rat. You can call me whatever the fuck you want, Heather. Just don't be throwing that shit around when Jer's trying to sell. Chill, dude. You still bought from me. How much? It's in the book. He might not next time. Dude. Ever since you you got back, you been, oh, I'm losing track of voices. Ever since you got back, you're, you're so much more assertive. Then the voice doesn't respond. Jeremy speaks up again. So what happened with Juan? We just talked, you know. He he wants to be a baker. He said next time we meet, he'll bring some uh, guava. Oh, good lord, that's a word. Campuchanas. Those are some apple turnover looking things, right? God, I'm hungry. Oh, that sounds good, Jeremy. Why'd you have to bring up apple turnovers? Well, uh, that's sort of what Campuchanas are. You brought them up, Heather. Jeremy, Jeremy laughs in his trademark bassy and abrupt titter? Titter. Are you gonna give one your cherry pie next time you see him too? What? Huh? I don't know how to cook. I don't even have a stove. Fuck me. The voice groans. It's it's slang for vagina, you know, a slice of cherry pie. I wouldn't put my junk in a vagina look like a slice of carrot cherry pie. You're gross. What? He said it. You both are. <laughs> Heather said this with a snitty flair, although it's subverted by her voice's more dopey childish undertone. I need to get out of this town. You haven't even been back that long. Are you upset about the dreams again? Yeah, the dreams and the shit are getting worse. But it's other stuff too. You just need to relax, dude. Smoke some, uh, you know what? What? That's what works for me when I get them. And try not to use it for stuff and try and sell. You gotta save up, you know? Everyone around here seems to be losing their shit. More so than usual. Plus that fucking bear's leering around here all the time. Ryan keeps pushing me to sell this cut. Injectable stuff. Won't tell me what it is. Really? There's a pause in the conversation. Keith wants to say hi to his mum before work. But what? Keith wants to say to his hi hi there. Keith wants to say hi to his mum before work. Heather. Keith wants to say hi to his mum before work. What's wrong with her? Why are you saying that, Heather? 
An increasing sense of urgency takes hold in Jeremy's unusually calm, lackadaisical, lackadaisical tone. Keith? You mean Keith from... Heather begins to sob. Her crying is spluttering and wet. I can hear it from here. Oh, God. He Heather? D -d Dude, what's wrong? She continues bawling, her whining cry increasing shrill and choked. Oh, my God! Heather! <laughs> I can't deal with this right now. Mika, give her a joint. Mika, what? What? I'm not giving her any more of mine. She's probably pulling this shit just to get more. Dude, now. I've got some of mine in the mini storage up back. Just hurry, okay? Fuck, okay, okay. Hearing footsteps, my heart lurches. I move back to the side of the structure, praying that my clumsy otter self is actually stealthy for once in my life. However, it isn't long before I see him round the same corner I just did. What in the goddamn shit? Mika's big eyes widen in alarm, the words catching his throat higher pitched than the others. There's a pause, having been caught, I haven't got a clue what of what to say. Well, shit, it really is you. I have no idea what voice to do for Mika, I'm not going to lie. That's fine. He mutters his face, taking more of a stern expression. What? What the fuck are you doing out here, schizo? I'm jolted for a moment, that being something I haven't been called in years. I swallow, crossing my arms and trying to look nonchalant. L looking for Jeremy? Thought you fucked off to college like the rest. I thought you disappeared back in 08. Quite a huff escapes a small bat. Well, I'm here now. Heather's crying can still be heard in the background, her banshee like wails providing an odd ambience to this reunion. Why do you need to see Jeremy? I'm looking for Carl. An, an indiscernible expression takes hold of Mitch's face, intense from the gaze flickering to his surroundings. Right, uh, Rich Goat ain't here. Why? Is Leo with you? No. Suddenly, Jeremy approaches from around the corner. Dude, what's, what is taken? What the hell? The stout phoenix turquoise eyes bulge. He's much more round than I remember him. Looking like a mix of Jenna with Carl's body. Schizo's here. Oh, Jesus, where's the wolf? He says he's not here. Guys, I'm looking for Carl. Even the police are searching for him now. Mitchell tenses the hell up of that information. His standoffish demeanor are completely gone. One of the few people he talked to before he went missing around midnight was you, Jeremy. Have any ideas where he could have gone? Jeremy stares ahead of me blankly, and there's a certain warmth that Jenna possesses through her gaze that her brother completely lacks. I look at Jeremy now, and all I can see are all the times he threatened me over stuff I didn't do, called me a faggot and hit me. There's definitely something different in his demeanour that I remember. He's less intense. Schizo, I tell, I tell you if I knew. I just hooked him up yesterday, like a quarter mile from his house. Ever since he crashed his ride, he makes me come out there to him when he wants to buy. So he didn't mention anything about running off? Eh, yeah. can't see Carl running. Why the hell would he want to want to when he's got everything he'd ever want in life in the castle? The castle. Which is why it's worrying that he isn't there. Did it look like someone broke in? No. Oh. You didn't give him anything laced, did you? I don't really know how all that works. No, it's the same stuff I smoke. It's not reassuring, but I nod regardless. Well, uh, thanks. We're staying at Carl's if you hear anything. See him around to get somewhere. Jeremy frowns, canting his head to the side. We, oui. is, uh, is Jenna with you? Yeah. Jeremy's frown deepens, but he doesn't look exactly angry or anything. Oh. There's a pause of silence punctuated by a choked sob from Heather behind the house. How's she doing? The usual. Better, and better than anyone else. Better than everyone else. Jeremy's frown <laughs> shifts a lot to a smile, the fox even grinning for a second. One of his front teeth is chipped in half. Sounds about right. Mitchell looks over his shoulder. Gonna get that joint now. He sidesteps, grunting as he passes. Nice soul patch, fag. Is this a, a actual point? This is not having any choices yet. Know. Let's save and see. Again, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, with this route. 
I know it's structured differently. It doesn't branch in the same way. It's more about like a point system. I know there are two endings. Uh, I think it's hard to get the bad ending, but I can't remember why. Like, it's just things I've heard. Uh, let's just try. Let's try and stay pat. Then, actually, no. Let's just be confrontational. You've got a glass house there, stone thrower. I've got a lot of stones now. Fuck off. Who the hell are these neon sign fuck me? Who, who the hell is this neon sign? Fuck me if a bat treat me like this. I liked him better when he was just a tiny annoying klepto. But I liked him even more when he was on the back of a milk carton. Jeremy watches Mika for a minute before scratching his gut. His eyes are upon me now. Yeah, um, uh, you should go now. Of course, gladly. I look around at my surroundings. I'll uh, let J Jenna know you're doing great here. Eat shit, don't come back. Jamie just stares at me until I begin to walk away, then goes back to Heather. She's still crying. That was unsettling for a variety of reasons. Mm. Interesting art piece there. I did not see it. Hey. Who the fuck is this? Oh, I think it's all creepy voice. Ah, um, okay. So you're leaving, running off to some fuck, uh, fuck some other wolf. It's a joke. Calm down. We, we were just trying to have some fun. I was starting to realise this probably wasn't the best time, but so you're playing this stupid game of keeping me guessing whether or not you're going to ditch me by the next by next year, and then you pull this shit outside. The hell is wrong with you? Me? You know, I told her that there was no way in hell you'd fall for, for, uh, fall for this, since you already knew how I felt about you. I'm the one that should be fucking offended that you think that. That's not fair. You wanted a reaction from me, and you got one. Happy? What's wrong? This was your idea? The phone clutched in the hand disappears. It's a prank. Making me think I lost my uh, lost my otter is a prank. If this is a fucking joke, then you need to learn how to make one first. Why don't you learn how to take one? How was I supposed to take that? Just laugh and shrug and say, "Well, fuck!" So much for that. Is that what you expected? Actually, just thought you wouldn't fall for it. At least not this hard. I mean, come on. I cropped that from the cover of some teen magazine. It was my number two, if you didn't notice. It's... It just wasn't a good time, alright? No? No. What the hell are you doing here, anyway? The semester ended last week. Yeah. So we're staying at home for the summer? Of course not. I'm staying with Emily. You need to calm down, Leo. How can we ever have fun if you're exploding all the time? Telling me to calm down is the worst thing you can do right now. I'm tired, I'm hot, I just wanted to have some lunch with him. You're overreacting. Going to Pueblo. I give up. I'm going to Pueblo, Lido. I just can't see that word. I look at it and my mouth just goes. Ah. I'm going to Pueblo, Leo. I stare through the grainy darkness. The motel room air is dry and stuffy. The air conditioner must be off. I look over. TJ is next to me on the bed. He's curled up in a fetal-like position, his knees raised and his tail between his legs. Teacher doesn't usually sleep like that. Leo lays in the bed across from us. He's laying on his back, his form perfectly still. There are no covers on him and he's still in his jeans from yesterday. Neither of them are snoring, just even audibly breathing, even audibly breathing for that matter. It takes me a moment, but I can't actually tell if Leo's eyes are closed or not. 
A picture in my mind, him slowly turning his head to look at me right now with no expression. He has no eyes, they're just shadows. I blink, trying to shift my legs beneath the sheets. Fortunately I can, I'm not dreaming anymore. Leo isn't actually looking at me, why did I even think that? And why does it even, why does it make me so unnerved? And that dream, Jesus. I slide my feet out from under the covers and sit up right on the edge of the bed. Maybe a splash of water would make me feel better. I think I could really use a dip in an actual pool. At Pueblo there's so many of them around I take them all for granted. The realisation dawns on me that once I graduate the chances of me being able to afford a place with one near, near, nearby are almost gone. I wring my tail, uh, I wring my tail some in my paws, my fur is oily and damp. I'll definitely need to take a shower in the morning. Hell, if the motel tub doesn't look like it's seen 20 years worth of dirty feet piss and cum, I take a bath. But at first I've got to get the AC going. I walk over to the wall-mounted AC by the window. I'm surprised the place doesn't use swamp coolers like every other home in Echo. I take a second for my eyes to adjust to the darkness, but I manage to turn and find the control knobs. Despite cracking the thing to max setting, only a petty stream of air is excluded from the front vents. It is cold though, so there's that. I stick my face up to it, the blowing air on my whiskers uh, making my jaws raise instinctively. It's refreshing, the world seems a little less hazy. Still I feel gross, more so than usual. I remember on Saturday morning I woke up super early to clean myself, trim my facial scruff and head fur and look as presentable as possible. I don't really know what I was trying, who I was trying to impress, maybe show everyone that I was well adjusted and normal now. All the grooming work I performed didn't last four hours in a hot car ride up to Echo though, especially when the AC went out on the way uh, from Galt City to Route 93. I wasn't even really excited to be here in the first place, it just happened to coincide with my project schedule when Leo was very insistent. I can't exactly blame him for trying, rose tinted glasses and all that sort of thing. Much as I hated Echo, the moments of hanging with the group growing up are still some of the best uh, I've ever had, even counting recent college happenings. We were all friends, but that friendship came with a lot of serious weight to it, baggage that was never unpacked, I guess. I didn't honestly expect us to even try to. Flynn had some other plans, and who could blame him either. After that Leo's freak out and Carl going missing, any sort of semblance of fun, idle spring break is gone. It's like there's a buzzing tension in the air, methane filling up the room and just waiting for the light to give a match. God, and here I am, whinging about how the mood is ruined and my, my old best friend is just fucking gone. What the hell was I expecting? I was to just all hang out a bunch of Christmas lights in Leo's backyard, grill up some some K Masada, get drunk and dance to a bunch of indie playlist. And of course, I'd fantasized about some sort of brief reunion with Leo. I mean, that's natural, right? What I didn't expect was this whole thing with Jenna. I'm still sorting out how I feel about it all. I glanced briefly at my camera bag, uh, camera bags at the end of the bed. I have a feeling I'm not going to get much done for my project. With some reluctance, I pull my face back from the cooling vents and head to the bathroom. I try to shut the door behind me quietly, but it's pretty loud. I look at the sink and realise that it's, uh, it's not going to cut it. I tuck off my shirt and underwear and place them on the edge of the counter. At home, I just throw them on the floor, but I don't really trust they'll clean the linoleum is here. I step into the shower. It gets hot quick, so I fill it with a handle some. There's some red fur tucked in the corner. I'm getting Leo took one earlier as well. He was worried the police would come by his place, so he insisted on staying here while we searched for Carl. I remember him and I, used, him and I used to take hour-long showers together back when my family was out of town. My parents had one of those walk-in Roman-style showers with marble tile. He thought it was the coolest thing. I bend down, pick up the tiny complimentary shampoo bottle from the rack, and begin to lather the contents into my fur. It's not exactly the best for, for specifically my type of fur, but it'll work for now. I bet Jenna would have loved that shower. She had to use an outdoor one for most of her life, as I recall. I think she lives off campus now in a studio apartment she picked out. I've never actually seen it. She probably splurged on, on uh, splurged with her full ride money and got something really nice. Bet it beats the hell out of the communal dorm showers, which are not as sexy as porn makes it, you believe. I begin lathering uh, further down the mental image of Jenna's golden form slick, uh, slick with water sticks in my head. I cut myself, squeezing a bit and starting to get hard. The smooth pink flesh is a sharp contrast from the rest of my fur. I quickly cover it with my paw to keep it, keep it from the hot water. Jen has seen me naked plenty of times, but mostly as a kid. Never stiff and ready quite like this. My heart thuds a little harder on my chest. 
close my eyes, hosting my arm up against the shower wall and resting my forehead against it. I can't believe I'm doing this right now with everything going on. It will feel better afterwards. Jen has that effect on people after all. I feel so smiling about swaying my tail some as I begin to pump away. Cheeky shower wank. Mmm. <laughs> Might as well, right? I mean, maybe that's why TJ takes so long on the shower. Possibly, but he is also cat. He is, very cat. And also cats apparently have spiky dicks. Mm. That's apparently a thing. Biology is a fun class to be taken. <laughs> Zoology, I had to do some of that in sec in um, university. Because mm. paleontology, you know? Yeah. And yeah, the things you learn. The things you learn. Mm -hmm. I slip out of the bathroom in my towel. I wasn't expecting to take a shower when I first went to the bathroom, so I didn't bring a change of clothes in with me. Creeping out, creeping over the pads of my feet, I disrobe and quickly be uh, begin to pull on a fresh t-shirt and shorts from my bag. Chase? TJ and Leo are no longer in bed. The links is over the light switch, squir uh, squinting blearily at me. Well, Leo blinks at me. Buenos dias. I quickly try to scamper on the rest rest of my shorts for for going underwear for the time being. Oh, oh, jeez. Sorry, Chase. TJ turns, quickly averting his gaze. Leo just sighs, some rubbing his eyes. Thanks for the show. Your phone was going off while you were in the shower. My cheeks feel a bit warm as I managed to get my shorts up to my waistline. Oh, uh, who called? Leo stares blankly at me, looking more tired than any of us. I wasn't going to check. An uneasy look punctu uh, punctuates that comment and it catches me a little off guard. Can I turn around now? Uh, yeah, TJ. Thank you. Links uncovers his eyes and moves to the bed, sitting back down. He still looks like he hasn't woken up yet. Sorry for waking you guys. I just really need in the shower. Otter stuff, you know? It's okay, Chase. You kind of woke me up for some pretty weird dreams. So, thank you. He manages a smile, still trying to blink the blurriness out of his eyes by the looks of it. His irises begin to narrow back to more slitted state. No problem, TJ. I actually should be getting back out there. It's 3.30 in the morning, are you sure? I finish putting on my shirt and move back to check my phone. I am sure. And when I find that goat, I swear to God... He stretches out some before stifling a yawn. Not gonna let him out of my sight for a month. It's a text from Jenna. Hey Chase, I can't sleep so I'm heading back to the motel. If you're up, do you want to go out looking with me? I'm feeling a little better after my shower so I send Jenna a quick text agreeing to help the search. Um, what does it say? TJ cans his head, peering at me with a sort of dazed, curious look. Jenna wants, Jenna wants having trouble sleeping, so she wants to go out searching. Leo looks up at May's expression indiscernible. Isn't it kind of dark to try and look for him? I mean, not that I'm trying to dissuade you at all, it just seems kind of harder. It's that old 48 hours thing. The harder we look now, the better. Sitting back and praying everything will work out won't do no good. TJ's eyes widen some, looking a bit taken aback. His jaws twitch some, the feeling looking down at the sheets between his legs. Uh, there's a knock at the door. The sound of jingling keys can be heard coming from the other side. There's a scratching noise of metal on metal, the door being unlocked. After a moment it opens. Jenna steps out from the darkness, rubbing her arms and making a beeline for her bag. Hey TJ, Chase, Leo. She nods to each of us in turn before beginning to rifle through her belongings. Aren't you supposed to be keeping watch of the house? Aren't you supposed to be in jail? TJ makes a noise that sounds like he just choked in his own spit. I try to avoid looking directly at Leo. He doesn't say anything, though I can hear the bed he's sitting on creak audibly. She takes out two water bottles, tossing one to me. I only barely catch it, mainly because it's stopped by my nose first. Ow. My snout tingles with the aftershock. My nose feels wet for some reason, though when I reach up there's no blood. Must be the burst blood vessel. Oh. She, st she stifles a brief, amused huff, looking apologetic. <laughs> You're still trying to wake up, I see. You think that's funny? Just walking here and hitting him like that? 
Leo's cracking baritone comes out a few decibels too loud, his tones staring like a scolding parent. It's a way of catching everyone's attention. That wasn't the intent. There's a pause. Leo's about to speak again, but Jenna managed to cut him off before he can. Speaking of, we're going to check, with, check in with Duke, see if he knows anything. Leo's jaw shifts as if trying to speak, but words don't come out. He leans back and forward again. Have fun. Chase, you all set? She looks at me expectant. I guess she's ready to go. Oh, oh yeah, sure. A forced a smile trying to downplay the cavalcade of tension the room has become. Goodbye, guys. See you later. She just seems to be doing the same. Leo just stares. We'll text for some updates in a bit. Jenna pats my shoulder once before heading out. I follow suit. The air is surprisingly fresh outside, even a bit of damp. It's as if the motel room itself has its own uh, oppressive atmosphere that was permeating my sinuses and now I'm finally free. Near the horizon, thick grey clouds form overhead. The reservation must be getting some rain. Jenna seems to notice as well, taking a few steps forward into my mostly empty park, uh, into the mostly empty parking lot before speaking up. Kind of nice out, isn't it? Yeah. She opens her mouth to speak, but pauses some as she looks over her shoulder. I like throwing crossing her blonde features. Come on, let's go. She starts moving again, heading towards the street. Jake's house, right? And we're walking. Yeah, is that a problem? She glances back. I reach down, feeling the tender, hardening muscle around my thighs and knees. Yeah, just still a bit sore from the hike, it's all. Oh, you're a tough guy, Chase. I'm sure you'll manage. A tough guy? I ask for something to catch up, the Fennec already on the road. She smiles some as I catch up alongside her. The phone has a flashlight, right? Yeah, oh, I'm uh, missing. I reach to my pocket and flick, my, uh, flick mm -hmm. on my phone. Takes a second, but I find the right button. The cracked pavement in front of us quickly illuminated. Just in case we come across any snakes or spiders. Or overweight rams. Those two. I shine my phone towards the sagebrush that winds along the narrow wash that passes by the motel. It's like I'm half expecting to see Carl's goofy grinning muzzle peeking out through the grambles. I'm sorry if I woke you. It's fine. I was in the shower. Uh, you woke everyone else, though. Hmm? Jenna straightens her tank top, peering through the cracked uh, glass windows of the old ice cream shop. Even the four lease sign on the awning is pretty faded away. It's still got that old Victorian style of architecture that you see in a lot of buildings built originally by the wealthiest settlers at the turn of the century. Faded green and pale blue paint still clings to part of the main, main facade. Uh, or facade. Is it facade or facade? Um. Facade, I think. Uh, with a copper metal roof, a mix of dark amber and turquoise. In its heyday, it probably stood out something fierce, a colourful contrast to the harsh pages of the desert. And ultimately, an opulent reminder of the old world amidst the new. I wasn't expecting Leo to be there, honestly. Have you given you any more trouble? I watch the pavement turn to packed dirt beneath my feet as we round the corner into Gretchen Road. It's a desolate stretch of road, only a striking feature is being a concrete mixing business that closed its doors back in the 90s. You can still see some of the big mounds of grey start past the slatted chain link. Ultimately it takes me a moment to respond to Jenna's question. No, he's he's just upset. I can practically feel the fox's incredulous raised eyebrow, a trademark reaction if she ever had one. Actually, well, this is going to sound stupid. Playing Leo's behaviour off as being just upset is stupid, but continue. I sigh. Sorry. Jenna frowns, someone moves closer, nudging my arm with her shoulder. Hey, you haven't done anything wrong. I don't know about that. Oh? Again, that expectant look. Ugh, here we go. I'm kind of glad you texted me. I didn't really want to go back to sleep. I guess I was having a nightmare, that sort of reoccurring one I've been having that's a little different each time. Each dream of facing myself, but it's not me, not like a mirror me. Things are different, messed up, blurred. Sometimes I, well, it speaks and it's all distorted, like an old AM radio station with a bad signal. Jenna looks away for a moment and back to me. And each time it gets a little clearer, and it might just be because it's fresh in my head right now, but I kind of remember what it was saying. I stopped briefly. 
shining the flashlight on a tumbleweed while across the dark road ahead. It briefly gets stuck in the mesquite tree, bouncing against the trunk and leaving a few twigs behind before rolling back along its course. Do you remember when I texted you that I got into Pueblo and you drove all the way back down here to celebrate? I do. You were going to surprise Leo, remember? I do. There was a delay in her words that she seems to already know exactly what intent or incident I'm referring to. The prank. Just a long, drawn out breath of air. He pretended you were cheating on him with those uh, fake texts I was sending you. He smashed your phone when you told him you were leaving Echo. Yes, it wasn't the best practical joke to play on someone who was already acting unstable. He wasn't. Chase, what does that have to do with your dream? She cuts me off, her tone more curious than stern. I know, it's just... The whole thing was just playing back like some kind of record, everything that happened. All the fake text messages sent me just as Jared, me leaving the phone on the table, Leo confronting me. Then you just showing up and telling him it's a joke and he's overreacting and then smash. I make a motion like, he's, like I'm going to toss my phone down. Jenna flinches instantly be grabbing for it before slowly furrowing her thin brows at me. Has Leo been guilty you about that? No, not really. So you've been feeling guilty then? I, I guess. Why else would this be, you know, manifesting in my subconscious and all that? Well, I'd usually recommend expressing this to Leo. If I didn't feel that your attempts at reconciliation would be perceived by him as you're trying to get back together. She rubs a bit of her short nose for crossing her arms over her chest. We did already apologise for this years ago, and if you absolutely must, maybe wait until we're back at Pueblo? He's clearly got some issues... He's clearly got some issues to sort out right now, and you're at under absolutely no obligation to try and solve them. Especially considering his recent behaviour. It's incredibly difficult to help people that don't want to be helped. This will definitely be a... Hmm. A point. Considering that um, it's an actual... Jenna moment. Yeah. Um... So, what do you think about what she's saying? Hmm... How do we want to play this? Like... Is it wrong to try and help Leo get over shit? I mean, I have a, f I have a feeling, going by my experience of people with the what they would call realistic outlook on life. Um, if you agree with them, you get closer to them. If you disagree with them, they just get annoyed. There's very few of them that, if you disagree with them, they appreciate your opinion, but it's not common. Hmm. See, I'm going more by experience with people who do not want help and will drag me down. Oh, there are a lot of those, and Leo is definitely one of them. Yeah. So I think what we'll do is we will agree with Jenna for this run and then disagree with her for the second run. Hmm. Imagine... We'll see what ending we get as well. Yeah. You're probably right. Plus, also, yeah. She gives me a sidelong look. I mean, you are right. I rub my paw across my face, swashing my own facial features into my paw pads. It's just shitty, I guess. You know, you know, some of 15 years of your life, you grew up with them. There's like, I don't know, a vested interest. I was there for every big mistake, triumph, you name it. I'm now not sure what exactly further support I can even offer at this point. It's just been too long. Plus, I'm gone again as soon as the weekend's up, and what's the point if we're probably just going to fuck things up worse? Chase. Jenna's tone is curt, but I look over to see her face very much matches her tone. Yo was dry humping you at a kiddie arcade. You do not need to feel this conflicted about being upset about that. Look. A moment of hesitation, like she knows the right words to say, but needs some time to phrase them more delicately. I understand that men have a different hormonal attraction to each other, 
than generally what I feel as a woman when I am attracted to someone. And then that feeling of attraction, and I'm paraphrasing something you probably already understand on that at least on at least an intuit intuitive level. It's boring and physical and sudden. There's an emphasis on aesthetics and well the mechanics of what's happening. I blink, getting the gist of what she's saying, but not exactly sure where she's going with us. As stereotypical as it is, most women feel attraction as a sort of slow burn. The passion is derived from intimacy, meaning, contrast with love, etc. She gesticulates in a swirling motion. That's not to say abrupt sparks of fantasy don't fall for women too, uh, just being what they are. So I may not be adequately equipped to fully grasp the true nature of your guys' relationship, but... What Leo did at the family plex is just beyond dumb. Latent hat horniness. It, it's complete detachment from reality. Of you two's respective situations. Jenna's voice raises some louder than our usual controlled level and probably inappropriate for this time of night. It's upsetting, especially so with all that going on. I continue to walk just ahead of Jenna, unsure of what to say, feeling like if I met her gaze right now I'd regret it. I shine my light on the lone desert willow that sits on the bank of the nearby wash. In the branches flickers of uh, in the branches flickers of reflected light shine back. Eyes. They're small, sitting squarely in a nest made from bramble like from that of tumbleweed from earlier. Bird. I announce, monotoned. Jaina steps up beside me, hands on hips like she's looking where I'm now pointing. She exhales some exasperation before responding. Yeah. Looks like a wren. What can you tell? As far as I know, Jaina was never much more into nature or animals. Wrens are the really fat ones. You know, the tongue. She pushes her small hands together, making a circle to emphasize the roundness. Her eyes must be better than mine because I can only just barely make out the beak. I look back at Jenna and she's still standing up at the tree. Something about the whole scene of it gives me a strange twist of nostal that twinge of nostalgia. I was wandering aimlessly around Echo with nowhere to go and nothing to do, and how we thought that feeling would last forever. Is it just me or is this conversation kind of familiar? Not the bird, I mean. You and I walking around talking about stupid things Leo's doing? Yeah, that's not too out of the ordinary. She smiles some. I can't help but smile back. Yeah, that and... God, do you remember showing me all those Yowie comics you got in the mail? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I hid them under a rock and a half mile from my house. I had to fight a scorpion to, uh, to get you uh, your... Uh, uh, Coco Tanu Kiai issues. Do you know that's amused now? He's shaking her head. And my relationship with the rest of the group besides Leo had mostly stayed the same after they found out I liked guys. Jenna and I actually drew more close after the fact. I found her really to be too into anime, talking to her about manga and dumb romance stuff, uh, and then was kind of fun. My hero. <laughs> I sort of remember discussing the differences between Yoe and Bara, and just uh, you just talking about how I can remind you of that. Saying those two words out loud feels weird. Boys love a man's love, right? I do remember that, Chase. I'm a little surprised you do. She says this with a forced, teasing tone to her voice for some reason. I can't... I can't my head... Curiously towards I, her. I think that's a word. I'm gonna Google that. Oh, no, I can't spell, apparently. No, that's, that's not the word. Uh, affected sing song or whining speech, private language of the underworld, hmm. um, interesting or use of pious words. Hmm. Um, to talk hypocritically, to talk in jargon, to pitch to one side. Ah. 
there you go to slope to set as an angle see, okay. yeah there we go yeah as a verb mm. to pitch to one side i've never heard that before i have to remember that um, there you go i'm learning something new every day uh well <laughs> why wouldn't i i really enjoyed all that talking with you about it i mean truly i suppose that's because i was the only one being humored for my special interest but it's while the rest of you were not remotely interested in it it's a little creepy now i think about it in context i waved dismissively no i mean you weren't like a fan yoshi or anything at least you've seen all that sort of yao junk leo kept in his computer it's pronounced yaoi by the way oh okay <laughs> the joshian really sure whatever man yeah he was pretty into the more porny stuff she didn't laugh some hmm. most yao is written by women who've never met a gay guy before it's full of gender imprinted ooky semi tropes and dubious consent hey sometimes that's hot I'm surprised the words leave my mouth and immediately i feel a burn on the edges of my ears jenna looks at me i can't quite read her expression now in the darkness though i'm not sure uh, i'm not about to shine the flashlight on her yeah that's part of why we need it as long as it's understood it's fantasy and not normalcy of course i nod but to take that this back to reality for a second no one should be forcing themselves something like that, no matter what they see in porn or how long they've known you. Right, I appreciate the concern. I nod again at Jenna, who returns to scanning the nearby underbrush. However, I can't help but feel at least a little like I'm being treated as some sort of battered victim here. Maybe I'm just too numb these days to feel like I probably should. The road turns you back should. to... should. <laughs> yeah, the road turns back into chipped asphalt as we get closer to the old rail yard. The tracks which run directly behind Leo and Duke's backyard, not that they'd seen any use in decades. Most of the houses down the road were newer. The, count the county even installed street lights after an old badger lady got hit by a car five years ago. That being said, most of the residences stand vacant now in various states of disrepair. As we round a bend, I spot Leo's house down the way. It's a little ranch style house with a big backyard right off a dirt road leading, to the, uh, leading from the street. It used to be his family's home before they moved out. No cop cars parked out front or anything, but I'd really expected there to be. Jenna slows for a moment, mm. peering over her shoulder. I like that artwork. Mm. I like the lighting. The lighting is very nice. It is. Mm. It has a vibe to it. It does, it does. Um, her senses are better than mine, so I lessen my pace as well, trying to listen carefully. It's dead silent beyond the usual desert ambience. The rustle of uh, breeze swept trees, chirping crickets and tweet, uh, tweets from the local night birds. I turn back to look at her. What? What? Oh, sorry. Uh, she frowns to herself. Nothing. Wait, did you hear something? Shakes her head, rubbing her wrist as she refocuses her attention back on me. No, just an unexpected nostalgia. I smile some. Glad I'm not the only one. Oh? For what? I can't exactly place it. Just a feeling. Almost like the sort of what people call deja vu. Ah. I know I'd sagely pretend to understand. She watches me for a moment as I study my face with something deeper. I watch her as well, the golden glow of the streetlight giving her fur a pale resonance, blurring her features into something warm and familiar. Her bushy tail sways and I can see the light plumes of desert dust scatter away on the asphalt beneath. They dissipate into air like smoke from a cigarette. When we were younger we had many nights like this, walking to or from Leo's place. Most of the time we'd be chatting about video games that we'd be playing or some manga that Jenna had got into. Looking back, I could tell she savoured those times. The fleeting moments she had away from home where she could express her passions without fear of judgement or ridicule. Well, occasionally they'd be ridicule. But of the good faith sort, I think. Whenever she criticised some dumb thing I said or weird-ass phrase I was going through, it never felt like she thought less of me. She suffered through my late 2000s frosted tip highlight scene phrase, after all. <laughs> She was just trying to make so courage make you a better person. Stop thinking about when you're covered in fur is like an actual horror. Yeah, I mean it depends how big your how big your uh, frosted tip phase covers. Like, is it the entire body? Do they have frosted tip like on their tails and paws? That frosted would be that would be backside. very scene kid. Frosted tip backside. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 
just going to amuse me for like a good 30 seconds. <laughs> she was just trying to encourage me to be a better person. Those long walk and talks we had then, ways to gush around small town and in just insanity. It was during those times I felt more secure in myself than I ever did elsewhere. It's also when I, well, we understood we truly didn't belong here. I can't help but wonder if that's what she's thinking of now. She smiles once, uh, she smiles once, then picks up the pace again. How long does someone smell once for? Hmm. Um, I step up and match her speed. I hope Duke still works late shifts. Or a woman being quite nocturnal when we were growing up. He works at the Blue Diamond Casino by the reservation, right? Hmm. As far as I can remember. I used to think that only native people could get jobs there. I know they try and keep it that way, but many of the locals in the res lack the skill set and training for some of the jobs. Hence the outsourcing. I think Dukes are at least worked as technically a uh, security technician. Huh. Guess I didn't know him that well. Me neither. But he was friends with my father. You can see Duke's house now, a large manufactured home that raised up like three feet off the ground. I think Flynn told me once they made him raise it up since it sat in a flood zone for the nearby wash. Said wash pretty much never had water in it except for one particular monsoon season where a flash flood sent white water currents down it. It's all, it all drains out to Lake Emma. It's difficult to see in the dark, but the house looks uh, looks to be in a bit of a sorry state. The yard is overgrown with tall weeds and there's a bunch of stripped bicycle parts and electronic components strewn about. Jenna sees it too and lets out an audible hum as if acknowledging some confirmed suspicion. I'm about to ask her what's up when she speaks up again. You know my grandma never left the reservation, no matter how bad it got down there. I used to visit her a lot before she got sick. Oh? There's something about the tone of her voice that makes me think I should stop walking. I turn and focus on her. Mm. I don't believe any of you guys ever met her. She's probably the most down-to-earth member of my family. Hello! Tom? Tom's joined. Hello, Tom. <laughs> we have a random Tom. Hello there. Hello. Hello. How are you? I pressed a button that I did not mean to press. <laughs> ah. I just wanted to look at the chat rather than the voice chat. I'm sorry. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Well, Bye you're, Tom. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> We're just reading some echo. You can join us if you want. Yeah, you can, you can give, you, give you, you another chat with us about what the video is. We'll give you another character that enthusiast that talks about blowjobs. You better not. I'll be very sorry. <laughs> we, we can give you a character that isn't a piece of shit. You can do Mika! To be fair, last time, wasn't a piece of shit. He was he was excitable, yes. But he wasn't a piece of shit. So yeah. That's nice. You, you can do Mika then, because I don't know what voice to do for Mika. It's gonna be a, a cowboy voice again, because that's all I know about Americans. Sure, that, but he's a funny. bat. That's totally He's funny. a bat and he wears, like, goth clothes. So, what I'm thinking is cowboy voice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, we'll carry on. Um, where were we? Uh, Despite go, genuinely we'll go, we'll go believing... Back one just to be... Okay. She's probably the most down-to-earth member of my family. Despite genuinely believing in a lot of the old spiritual aspects of the Meseta culture. Like rain dances? Jenna gives me a look that makes me immediately regret speaking, my tail curling instinctively. You're thinking of the Pawaska tribe. They're the ones that did the dancing around the bonfire bit that gets attributed to every native culture for some reason. Right, my bad. I give her a little thumbs up as a way of understanding. I must look especially scorned because Jenna begins to snicker a little. She reaches over, pushing my thumb down and squeezing my fist. Her grasp is incredibly soft and I feel myself longing for it again as she lets go. Hey, you're a college-educated journalist now. You can't get away with cute ignorance anymore. I've got one more year left of that, actually. I say with a full defensive tone. I guess I should hold on to staying cute as long as I can. Oh, that's easy, Chase. All you have to do is lose the goatee. What? Oh, come on. 
I reach up and grab the dyed piece of facial scruff and bubble, uh, and a bubbling sense of self-consciousness burns at my cheeks. Jenna laughs some more. I'm just kidding. I know Leo isn't a fan of it though. He told me as much. I let a bit of a defeated noise. For some reason that also kind of stings. Jenna waves dismissively, trying to get back to what she was saying. She seems serious about getting uh, what she has to say off her chest. Anyway, Grandma had this ham radio equipment in her house. She started collecting it after Grandpa died, which was long before I was born. She was really into technology and broadcasting, which admittedly was an oddball contrast from a more spiritual, traditional-based outlook on life. She crosses her arms, taking a glance uh, inside the old par uh, parked pickup truck that's missing its plates on the side of the road. I shine my phone's flashlight inside, but it's just a bunch of bags with like farming stuff, mainly fertilizer. I remember thinking it was neat. She used to sit on her porch with it, uh, with all her quilting gear, and talk on the radio to passing truckers. Wow, really? I start to picture of an old native woman who looks like Jenna, knitting needles in one paw and radio mic in the other. Yeah, her radio had a pretty good range. She did this for years, got kind of a reputation because of it. Sweetheart of Echo Valley or something along those lines. Oh. She was, like, flirting with them? Jenna smirks, slightly shrugging her shoulders. Well, I suppose it was probably some of that. I remember Adam mentioning that occasionally she would find flowers in her post box, sometimes even letters. Grandma was pretty shy, actually, and didn't like how she looked. When she was born, her ears and parts of her scalp were malformed. There was some kind of underf um, underfunded tribal clinic up north, so they weren't equipped to fix it. Didn't get the money for that later in life either. She brings her paw up to her ears, running her fingers down them to the base of her head fur. She always wanted to wear these big sun hats whenever she went somewhere, like she didn't feel right being seen. But over the radio, she would mainly just talk to these truck drivers, ask them about their day, things that happened that made them happy. And I remember hearing about this one particular time, where she talked with a truck driver who had recently lost his wife in an accident. Naturally, he was very upset and well, was considering whether or not his life was worth living anymore. So Grandma told him to pull over and come visit her. He was reluctant at first, but he did. Grandma got together with all the other old neighborhood ladies and rolled up their big ancient grill from the 60s. They baked a bunch of fry bread and cooked up a bunch of tacos. She even went out and personally got the ingredients to make some homemade cookies, since he mentioned he liked those over the radio. When he got there, she taught him how to make all the food himself. She was worried about a wife. Uh, she was worried without a wife, uh, he wouldn't know how to cook something that was decent on his own. She also went around and introduced him to everyone, treated him like a guest of honor. He was this little rat guy, really meek. At first, he was worried he was being awkward and was out of place, but they talked for hours and hours, way into the night. His wife and him had been together for 18 years, and she was an art teacher at an elementary school at Two Canyons. So before he left, she and him made a sandpipe painting. A sand painting? I'm reluctant to interrupt, but I'd never heard of it before. It's a painting in the sand, usually done with pigments. What's interesting is, they're not really art objects. Oh, we lost the Tom. Oh, oh well. <laughs> sure, we'll be back. I hope he will heal to become better. I'm guessing he wasn't interested. <laughs> Maybe he's going to perfect his cowboy voice. Once painted, the person who means healing will sit in the centre of the painting. The energy and good will that was put into the painting was to help the person in need, healing spirits, that sort of thing. I know nowadays you mainly see them framed up on roadside craft sales, but that's what they were originally for. So, uh... Gina trails off and I look away as she clears her throat. She takes a slow breath and it takes her just a second to continue. My parents weren't there at Grandma's funeral. It was some public meeting building out in Peyton for some reason. Jesus, the music just got loud. For my family, it was just Adam and I. Adam? Really? 
Yeah, it was a long while before. Uh, it was a long while ago before he started changing. We were nearly a third of the way through the service when the rat guy shows up, and I have to ask Adam who he is. The only people there at that point were us foxes. After that, I started noticing more non foxes coming in. Some were literally wearing those stereotypical trucker hats with the holy bits in the back. And of course, half the people there were really confused who these guys were. Like, maybe they were at the wrong funeral. They just sort of sat at the back and Adam went up to speak. She folds her arms tighter across her chest, smiling at herself as her gaze flicks upward. Adam started his way through the speech, but at the end of it, he started inviting all the new arrivals to, in the back. A lot of them were fairly gruff looking uh, guys, you know? And one by one, they get up and start reading letters. She pauses again. Letters thanking her for being so kind, for giving them someone to talk to about their problems, or just being so witty and fun to speak to. The rat guy? God, I wish I remembered his name. He went up last, and his letter addressed Grandma like she was still there with us. He talked about how he was doing, how tough things are after what happened. He mentioned his wife by name about how losing someone so good and special can make it feel like the world has become so much darker. But how it was always important to remember that there were still good people out there, even if they're just someone you can lend an ear for a while. And it felt like he was actually talking to us about Grandma. I thought about that a lot when, you know, Adam passed. And how it wasn't just a chemical imbalance, but maybe perhaps he just needed someone to talk to. She keeps her arms still tightly folded over her torso, ah, uh, folded over her torso, although it looks more now like a self bracing measure. A far cry from her usual standoffish posturing. I also thought about how I'm just so goddamn alone out here. She gestures with both arms to her surroundings. I peer down at myself and back at Jenna. She lets out a little noise that sounds like a quick sigh before shaking her head. Not you specifically, but rather anyone stuck in this place. What is it with Echo and taking away all that's good? She's looking at me now, but I might as well be a brick wall for a quip day. I'm to answer that question. It feels almost rhetorical in nature and something with so many reasons you could apply that becomes simply too much to put into words. I sheepishly hold up an arm. It would be too patronising, too much a stereotypical guy thing to reach out to her now. It's a moment of vulnerability where someone who's cultivated a life's worth of being invulnerable. I suppose we've all got we've all got heavy shit under the surface, Jenna probably most of all. Or some of us are sort of downplay it with jokes, self deprecating or lashing out at others, Jenna's always kept it under said surface. What are you gonna say? So we lost Tom again. <laughs> oh, has he come back and gone again? Oh, okay. I don't know, maybe he's typing? Hmm. Um Seeing this all brought, yes. he's typing. Ooh, okay. Uh, seeing this all brought to the surface, brought to light, uh, feels like something raw, uncomfortable, something understood to be immovable, being moved. I look past Jenna to the wash. It's like the desert flooding. Sorry, like the desert flooding. I, I exhale, looking back down her. I can feel my mind going blank, like I did earlier. Her expression's indiscernible, but she, but she's still looking at me. This, this will probably definitely be a question if, not, if the one before isn't, so I will definitely save here. What do we think? Your choice. What do you think about Echo? I mean, I think it's probably the second or third option. Yeah. We are going for the one that mostly agrees with her, an earlier one, so I think probably the middle one for this one. You can't see when I'm slowly nodding. Just okay. yeah, it's your choice. Yeah, I think we'll we'll, we'll carry on in the sort of as I, I I sort of always kind of uh, refer to it as like a sort of alignment choice of roughly what kind of run I'm going for with this. So I think the alignment choice I'm going I've gone for so far I will go with this one. I was really fortunate growing up. I had a boyfriend I loved, a group of friends who supported me, and a family who gave a shit. And I'm not like the world's most mentally healthy person, you know? I see a completely alternative timeline where I'm just like the rest of the guys in Tetanus Alley or worse. 
I rub the back of my neck sheepishly. I'm not good at making these reassuring speeches. This is all stuff I'd mentally thought, thought about before. That rat guy was right. Having someone around who gives a damn means the world. And isolating yourself from said world isn't how you make yourself better, it's the opposite. And for keeping me sane, I do think I kind of have you to thank for that in some part. My voice cracks, I try to cover it with a cough. Smooth. Thank you, James. Jenna smiles slightly. That's actually rather beautiful. Has this been on your mind for a while? I shrug. Lately, at least. Well, I'd like to think about uh, that. I'd like to think that his and your sentiments are true. If we have time, I might stop by to see Jeremy. When I talked to him, he sounded like he wouldn't mind seeing you again. Jenna chuckles briefly. It's strange, isn't it? The notion of you talking to him now as adults. As kids, we were, uh, we were all so at odds over truly stupid things. I suppose I'm curious whether he's grown up as well. I guess we'll see. Jenna raises a brow. Maybe, I mean. All this being said, I'm truly not excited to go back and talk with him or his friends. For Jenna's sake, I can quit and bear it though. I guess I have to ask, what made you think of this? I mean, the story about your grandmother. Is it just talking about tech stuff and the reservation? Jenna ponders this question for a moment, looking a bit more like her usual self. However, there's still a slight unnerved tinge to her, like a tail. Like her tail has been on the extra bit of bristle to it. I suppose what's got to me, uh, what, that's what's got to be talking about her. Though I started thinking about all this earlier. Oh. Up ahead, the screen door on the side of Duke's house flings open. A familiar ash-coloured uh, ash figure peers out, attention focused on us. Who, who did Duke again? Um, I can do Duke if you want. I can't remember who, like, who was actually doing it. What What does Duke sound like? What kind of voice should we give him? I think it was gruff. He is a meth head. Um, gruff meth head. I, mean, I try not to do the, the sort of stereotypical one I've done for every other one so far. Um, <laughs> all right, this one will do. What's you two? Uh, what are you two doing? He calls out. I'm to really us. going with Liverpudlian there. Yeah, Liverpudlian. <laughs> uh, he calls out to us, having to shout since we're nearly three properties down. At Pueblo, I'd cringe at the idea of someone shouting out this late in a neighbourhood. However, most of these houses are long since abandoned. Jenna and I exchange a look before making our way to closer to respond. The lanky weasel was certainly looking rougher around the edges than I remember, the old man taking slow steps into his overgrown front yard. Of course he's got his gun on him, his paws gingerly clutching it while the other brandishes a cigarette. Or at least, I think it's a cigarette. Real late. Uh, my, my brain can't remember how the fuck to do it. I've thought about it, my brain can't remember how the fuck to do it. Now there we go, right. Uh, real late for a stroll. He mumbles. Duke, hi, good morning, it's Jenna. Is that Chase with you? I hold up my paw and wave. Hi. Hmm, it is. Duke takes a drag from his fat cigarette and I see the same uh, embers fling around as he taps the end. In my mind, I imagine one of those little specks of fire catching on the untrimmed grass behind and setting everything ablaze. I knew it. What Leo's been saying is true. He was seeing shit as well. Confronted him about it and he got a wild look in his eyes. He pushed me to the dirt. But here you are, in the flesh and talking this time. I gave him a befuddled look. What's he talking about? Well, Leo's going through a bit a uh, bit of a rough time. And that's certainly no excuse for the violence he's imposed upon you. However, we did see you at Carl's house. And you might have heard that he's missing. Hmm. What good timing for your arrival then, Jasmine? It's Jenna now, but that's besides the point. His bloodshot eyes shift from me to her, and that makes me even more uneasy. Have you seen Carl since last night? Duke clicks his tongue, shaking his head more times than he really needs to. I don't think you're investigating the rod mystery here. Jenna raises an eyebrow. He points at a swollen, he points a swollen pink finger in my direction, still looking at Jenna. 
Oh, sorry. The real question is why has your friend here been snooping around the houses for the past month? What? Jenna furrows her brow, a light sigh escaping from between her lips. I don't know what... You feel her hand just discreetly reach over and squeeze my side. Hold on, Chase. She mutters, refocusing her attention back to the weasel. Duke, please focus on me for a moment. Listen to the words I'm saying. Have you seen Carl since last night? Duke hangs his mole open, rolling his jaw around from side to side till there's an audible click as it locks back in, uh, as it locks into place. I don't think you're hearing me. I heard you, Duke. Please, a yes or no question, uh, a yes or no answer, and then we can discuss what you saw with Chase here. Duke's bloodshot gaze flicks back to me. That there's something, expecting a bit of look in his eyes, like he's waiting for me to say something uh, rev revelatory. I have no clue what he's talking about, though, and Jenna doesn't seem to want to give him an inch of leeway to change the topic of conversation. Hmm. I see his teeth grip past his thin lips. Despite the intensity he's putting, he's putting off, he looks kind of distracted, like we're only getting about three-fourths of his attention. Maybe it wasn't quite you, though, was it? His voice is strained and quiet. The weasel scratches his inner thigh. I didn't see the ram boy, or his little rich parents. Okay, thank you. Chase? Uh, oh, I only got here Saturday. I wasn't here before then. There's only really one other R in town, as far as I know, and he probably weighs 150 pounds more than me. So I don't really know who else it could be. Duke just glares in response to that, and I can't help but drift my gaze to the gun he's holding so idly in his grasp. I think he notices me as his fingers clench around the base of the gun a little tighter. Okay, thank you, Duke. It's really good to see you again. If you have the right time, keep an eye out for him, okay? We can't seem, to, uh, can't seem to track him down. He's right there. He points to me. Uh, no, I'm referring to Carl. Carl's not here. Right, we're gonna go look around some more and knock on a few doors once the sun's up. You take care, okay? Before I can so much as raise my paw and farewell, Jenna's already turned about and making her way down the street. Again, I have to hustle to catch up. I'm probably going to have to head off in a minute. That's I'm fine. afraid. Yeah. Shall we uh, take it? Shall we pause there, considering that's a, a sort of somewhat It's a good point. place. Yeah, it's a good place to pause, I think. Okay. Yeah, I will anyway. stop that and save there. Yes. All right, well, we will continue more of this on Monday. Um, Which is tomorrow? Yes, it is tomorrow. Yeah, so, fuck. Um, what kind of time should you tomorrow? Um, I don't think I've got anything on. After 5pm, I'm definitely free. The only thing that's really on is counselling. Ah, right, okay. Well, uh, let me know tomorrow what kind of time suits you, and we'll, yeah. we'll go from there. But yes, cool, cool, cool. Um, so apart from us, we will be back tomorrow with more Echo. Uh, Tuesday, there'll be no stream in the evening, but there will be a Halloween thing. I think, oh, just also remembered, there's a Halloween thing later tonight. In like hey. three hours time, there's a Halloween thing. <laughs> so yeah, there's a Halloween thing there tonight uh, with AJ, with Sharona, with Crimson, with Lupine. Uh, join in, watch it, it'll be a laugh. Um, tomorrow, will, tomorrow, as I said, will be more Echo. Tuesday, there'll be no evening stream, but there'll be a late night Halloween stream from like, I think it's 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, there's horror gaming um, for charity with Crimson. I don't know what time we're starting. All I know is we're playing Demonologist. Thursday they'll be back to the indie horror as usual for this week. Um, I know there's a Fierce of Fathoms game we'll probably be playing because I haven't picked it up yet, but I probably will. Um, I'm expecting it to be terrible like the previous ones, but we'll wait and see and find out. Uh, Friday will be more distrust with myself, Tom and Zeph. Uh, and then afterwards hopefully some Sons of the Forest with AJ. The next Saturday at the moment is a night off. And then next Sunday it will hopefully be more Dark Tide and we'll see where we go from there. So yeah, yeah. Um, the next week is a bit, bit full but hopefully we will have some fun with it so uh thank you everyone for watching along we'll just quickly see if anyone we know else is on so we can raid out into them since we didn't raid earlier uh let's see how oh, darren's still on we will is he is he drunk no nope, he's, he's talking enthusiastically that's a good sign right <laughs> well let's uh, let's go raid into enthusiastic darren 
so uh yes until next time folks you all have a fantastic uh remainder of your weekend even if it is a little bit short uh mm -hmm. but we will be back with more echo tomorrow so until then you all take care good night have a good one